Okay, so chipping a drill is, or making a drill is pretty straightforward. And uh, I think a lot of them were done on, you know, just preforms or broken tips. So let's see. Um, I'm not sure if there's many in the archaeological record that have bases that look like this on the drills themselves. Um, so I guess usually they were done on um, either you know highly chipped or resharpened points or you know preforms of some sort. Okay, so let's see. I think I had a request to do a drill, uh, to nap a drill. So let me just do that quickly here. Now the, th the thickness and the flatness is already pretty good on this, so uh, it's just a matter of going through the motions To get this chipped. Now you don't want a lot of step fractures uh, because you know when you resharpen these drills need to be periodically resharpened. Uh, you want to be able to do that easily and if you have a lot of step fractures in your drill it's not going to be easy to resharpen. And um, you kind of want a large base also because when you resharpen a drill, it's a little bit different than an arrowhead because if you want to do a production run on a bunch of shafts, um, you know, you want them all to match as much as possible. So let's say I broke it on this one and I wanted to make an exact duplicate. You can uh, you can do it, but you got to be really careful and you take you take a little bit off of the whole outside of the drill. And you know, the tip gets worn down a little bit and these sides get worn down a little bit. And with enough resharpenings these drills end up looking like um, crosses or T's where you know it's been resharpened so much that this base becomes just a, a thin uh, ear on each side. Okay just as a side note uh, if you look on uh, if you look at some of the sources they'll show drills that look like T's and that's just because they've been resharpened a lot or when they originally made the drill, they picked a preform that was kind of short, and they had to, you know, uh, get the whole bit in that piece, and they were only left a little bit at the at the bottom. All right, but ideally, you want to have plenty of room at the base for resharpening. Okay. And I don't want to do thinning on this. As long as the uh, the drill bit is less thick than it is wide, it works fine. It doesn't need to be ultra thin. In fact, it's better if it has a median ridge down both sides. Now, if you're going to haft this onto something, it's best to, you know, center the axis of the drill onto the base. Uh, but if you're just going to anchor it like I did, it really doesn't matter where this um, 
where the axis of the bit is. As long as you don't have any curves anywhere, it's got to be straight. Uh, I think that's what dif differentiates drill bits from perforators is that the, uh, the drill bit has to be straight, both from the side view and the, the, the front view or the face view, in order to drill easily and properly. Now, there's a little bit of wiggle room there, uh, so to speak. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you saw on the videos, you know, while I'm drilling, this thing wobbles around and the stick wobbles around. You're not going to get a perfect um, perfect cavity in the wood, uh, and you don't need to. It's not precision work like modern work is usually very precise. Anyway, I'm just casually chipping this, just making sure I don't go past halfway with the strikes, with the flakes. I want to maintain a median ridge and I don't want any step fractures if I can help it. Now there's a, there's a little boogery spot there. There it goes. I think there was a little bit of quartz in there. Anyway, you can also just bevel these. They don't need to be bifacial. Um, or you don't need to send uh, flakes across on both faces uh, from both sides, from both edges. Uh, you, can, you can bevel these, which means you can just chip this one side, flip it over, and chip that other side. And it doesn't have to have a median ridge down the middle. It's just as long as it's got some thickness so it won't break. Well, on this one I am going to do flaking to the middle on both sides from each edge. Now you can maybe put a twist in it. See so if you bevel it, the drill bit will have a slight twist. But uh, I don't. I haven't seen any benefit uh, from that in my experience. It doesn't make it drill any better. Not on, you know, seasoned dry wood anyway. I don't know, maybe I just don't notice. What I do notice is this, the sharper this is, and the more consistent, the straighter the edge, and the straighter the bit, the better it drills. So, to me, uh, a wood drill is very, very straight, consistent thickness, and a, a perforator or something to poke uh, holes in leather uh, can be curved either that way, you know, curved this way or curved that way. It doesn't really matter. The perforator, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, have to uh, be precise if you're gonna, just going to poke holes in leather. 
Okay. I mean, it does need to be strong if you're going to be poking holes in rawhide or something like that. But it doesn't need to be perfectly straight. Not like drilling wood. So yeah, just the straightforward, typical stuff. Uh, straightforward and typical as far as the flint napping goes. As far as the, I think most drills in the past were made with uh, pressure. But I just like punch work uh, because you don't have to deal with the uh, little flakes falling in into your hand. But to finish up, nothing beats careful pressure and I like the, the drill bits to be a little bit rounded on the on the tip and not really pointed and again that's probably a way to tell the difference between a perforator or a hole punch and a, a wood drill is a wood drill will have a rounded tip Because that pointed tip will just break off right away. Even if you have a soft pith, eventually that sharp tip will break off. Now, do you need a? Do you need that hollow ground? You know, scooped out pressure flaking. Is that mandatory for drill bits? I don't think so. Um, it's good for arrowheads, but for drill bits, if the edge is very delicate, it tends to break and chip faster. So. Um, I would recommend that you not make the edge too thin. And I think you know what I mean by hollow ground. Uh, you know, when knives are ground, sometimes they, uh, instead of grinding them flat like this, you grind them kind of scooped out and it creates a very thin edge or a hollow ground effect. And you can do the same thing with flaking. Those little bulbs of percussion can scoop out that blade and leave an extremely thin edge. But I don't recommend that for drills. Like I said, the, uh, the, the edge will chip very easily if it's too delicate. And you'll get uh, You know, you'll get an uneven edge on your drill and uh, you'll feel it stick. You'll feel it stick in the wood. It's hard to, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's a rougher drilling experience, <laughs> I guess you could call it. Uh, and uh, I know not many of you, or I don't, I don't use stone drills very often. Uh, but when I do, I don't like it to be a big hassle. And having a nice uh, straight edge is one of those things that makes it easier. And it, the more consistent you can make this, the better. You know, the stronger it will be and the easier it will be on you. Okay. So the only thing left maybe is to... Uh, uh, grind down the edges that you'll be touching 
and maybe putting in a little serrated edge or little serrations along the edge making it smoother I don't know if smoother is a good word but making it straighter I guess less um, less jagged I've got a few uh, areas that are kind of thick that I kind of crushed and it's best to get rid of those areas and, and you know uh, either with a fine tip or just kind of power through those so you don't have any crush uh, any crushing on the edge at all because crushing is what's going to eventually happen with the drill bit so you don't want that to begin with you know after the edge crushes and becomes dull you know you resharpen it you don't want to start with a crushed edge it just shortens the life of the drill bit or it won't be as long as it could have been Anyway, as I'm talking, I'm crushing the edge, so I shouldn't talk too much. Anyway, I, get, I think you get the idea. And what, what you do is you just, if you want to duplicate something before, you just keep fitting it in there and wait till it fits. Keep trimming it down and then uh, it'll eventually fit. You know, I still have a ways to go. to match this one but there you go this will work too I mean it doesn't need to be this thin I just wanted to show you something that thin because uh, it looks kind of delicate but it's, it's actually not too bad. It will snap, but it's actually not too bad. It's not too weak. It, it will do the job on uh, relatively soft wood like red osier. Uh, I think ha hazel wood is also one of the softer woods. Um, and there's various other ones. As long as it has a good, a good size pith, uh, chances are it's soft enough to drill easily. Okay. There you go.